This video here is for international baccalaureate students who are doing the diploma program and they, they're taking digital society and they're not quite sure what to do for their internal assessment. So this video is a guide for students who are about to start or they're midway through their internal assessment and they need a little bit of a push. So that's what this guide is all about. Uh, so first of all, I've got some steps, 10 steps to do. So first of all, the first step is just understanding the actual task. So I'll go through that. Uh, the next one is choosing your topic. Uh, this is actually a bit of a challenge for students because there are so many topics to choose from, actually trying to identify exactly which topic is right for you. And there's also enough res uh, resource uh, research out there to create uh, your IA. Uh, once you've chosen your topic, you need to conduct the research. Uh, along the way too, you're going to have to develop your research question as well. So you might start with a kind of a bit of a vague idea, uh, but as you do your research, you're going to develop that more and more. Next thing is uh, plan the investigation. So an important part of the uh, assessment criteria is that you, you explain uh, your research, how you conducted your research and why you conducted it. Uh, so that's an important step. Uh, so when you're doing your research, you're going to collect and you're, you're going to collect a lot of, lot of research and then you're going to analyze it. Uh, and then what the other thing you're going to have to do is identify three main sources. That's a, one of the documentation requirements. So as with the research pro process, you're going to gather a lot of research, gather a lot of uh, data. How do you identify the three key uh, re uh, sources of information for this task? Next thing, after you've gathered all your resources and you've uh, identified the three main uh, sources, you need to draw some kind of a conclusion at the end. Uh, at the end, you can reflect on the process and also just tidy up and prepare all your documentations in your multimedia uh, artifact uh, ready for submission. Now, some more detail. Let's do a bit more of a deeper dive here. So this is the guide that I'm uh, that I would suggest, you don't have to do it this way, but that's, this is the way I would suggest you do it. Uh, first of all, um, step one is actually just getting an understanding of what the task is. So to do that, I think manipulating and moving text around a document is actually probably the best method. So whether you're doing it in pencil and paper or you're actually typing it out, I'd probably recommend typing it out because if you're a digital society student, you're probably pretty savvy with technology. So prepare the document. Um, create your own title page, uh, work through, understand and, and the, all the assessment criteria. So put that on your document. So I'll take you through that. Um, and then divide your assessment, your document, your working document up into three main sections. The first section is gonna be the inquiry process document. The next part will be your multimedia presentation and the third part will be your references at the end, your, your bibliography. Uh, step two. What are you going to research? What is, what's a topic of interest? Um, so brainstorm a lot of different ideas and concepts uh, until you identify exactly which topic that you're going to focus on. Uh, step three, you're going to refine your research question and your research focus. And this only happens once you start digging into the research, because the more you start to understand the field of study, the more you can actually Decide on what kind of a slant or what angle you're going to come from or what, what kind of an argument you're going to present in your uh, IA. Next is conduct your deep research and then gather your research for this presentation, which is step five. First of all, you do your criterion A and B, which is all about the research. And then the last one is putting together your multimedia presentation. Okay, let's do a bit more of an even more deeper dive. Let's go into uh, step one, and I've got prepared here an appendix one. So here is a bit of an example of a title page. So create some kind of a title page. Now, whether you have the title page or not is actually kind of irrelevant, but it's mainly just putting a stamp of ownership on a document. So when you open it up, whatever, whatever you're opening up your Word documents, your OneDrive or your Google Doc, you see that document, you see the title page, and you know that that's your IA. So pick a specific font or even a certain color so you know exactly, yes, that's my working document. So it's easily identifiable compared to the rest of your Google Drive or OneDrive or wherever else you're storing your research documents. Um, so some key things put on your title page, your name, your school, your subjects, your research question, which will be developed along the way, 
key dates. Now, this is a very important part of organization. What, what are the key dates that you're gonna set yourself? So the first of all is being aware of when your IA is actually, actually needs to be submitted and then work backwards from there, set your own kind of like deadlines when you're gonna do the different stages. Uh, so you can see this title page is actually starting to organize. This is a key part of organization. Um, now, the other thing is the structure. You've got, a, you've got 1,500 words for your inquiry process document. Uh, so how are you gonna divide that up? What, where are you gonna distribute those words? So that's an important uh, stage. And then you also, your multimedia is 10 minutes. So what are you, how, are you gonna pre, uh, how are you gonna pace out and step out and plan your multimedia presentation? So that's your title page, and there's an example of a title page. Uh, next, we then dig deep into the assessment criteria. Now, I've shared this assessment criteria on a website, or you can find it. Your teachers can share it with you, and you've got the IB guidebook, the syllabus, so you can get the assessment criteria. I would thoroughly recommend that you copy and paste the assessment criteria onto your working document so it's there and it's clear, and you're all fully aware of it as you work your way through this research project. Um, so first part, part is worth three marks and that's the inquiry process. So to get top marks here, you need, your focus needs to be appropriate and targeted. And you're not sharing information, you have a need to have a focus. Uh, and the next thing you need to do is, the focus includes your inquiry questions. So the inquiry question that you're developing is actually a very important part, a crucial part uh, for this IA. You also need to explain the connections to a specific, relevant, and real-world example. So through your research, you should be able to find one good, real-world, real-life situation which you can connect your research to. You also need to connect with the digital society concepts, content, and contexts as well. So that's how you get top marks for Criterion A. Criterion B, claims and perspectives. So to get top marks here, there's a thorough discussion of claims and perspectives. So no matter what field you're researching, there are certain claims and there's certain perspectives. So you need to be quite clear and transparent about this. So whoever's assessing your IA, they can see that, oh yes, this person's identified very focused uh, claims and perspectives. Uh, for each source, so you've got three sources, the three main sources. Now, uh, you can do this a couple of ways. So you've got three sources. now. As you're, you're probably gonna gather a massive amount of resources uh, initially, you, then you need to kind of highlight the three. Now, uh, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You need to, maybe you're gonna start with big picture research. That might be your uh, first source. Second source might be a bit more focused um, and highlight one of the key issues and dig, do a deeper dive uh, that you've, you, some, if, you've, if you've discovered something in, in source one, Source two does a more focused exploration of that specific thing. And then the third one can either be more focused or go back to the bigger picture, or it could be an alternative claim. So you're kind of leading the, uh, re uh, the, the reader along this path. You start with the big picture and get smaller and smaller. And then oh, all of a sudden you've got this counter claim and then you can your title together with your conclusion as well. The other way you could do this is sort of some comparing and some contrasting as well. So your three sources might be slightly different and you're com com comparing and contrasting these different claims and perspectives. So there's a couple of ways to do that. That's just a couple, a couple of examples to get you thinking about how you might want to tackle this. Okay, now moving on to the presentation part. So we've just covered uh, criterion A and B, which is the uh, documentation, the inquiry process document. And now moving on to C and D, which is your multimedia presentation. Now for your multimedia presentation, for Criterion C, you now, now to get six marks for this, once you've conducted your thorough research, you need to analyze and evaluate the impacts and implications for peoples and communities. So the impacts, very important theme within digital society. So whatever tech you're focusing on, which is primarily what people will be writing their IA and preparing their IA about technology, what impacts is this technology and implications for peoples and communities. Now you need to do this effectively to get a score of six and it needs to be supported, well supported. Now what that means is that you need to have clear evidence that you've done, conducted the research and you're connecting certain pieces of information to research that you've done. Now there's two ways, two types of research you can do here. 
or primarily you're going to be doing um, secondary research. So you're going to be researching uh, journals, websites, blogs, whatever it might be. Uh, so gathering a lot of secondary research, conducting a lot of secondary research. But there's also room for some primary research here. So if there's a specific field that you're studying and you have some first-hand knowledge or you, you're going to or you're going to gather some data in that field, that would be very powerful. But make sure it's clear that you have conducted this primary research. And you don't just use phrases like, in my opinion, I think that, but you say, when I conducted primary research, it was discovered that, blah, blah, blah. So this is how you, uh, this is how you, be, when you're preparing your presentation, it becomes well supported because you're making clear links to where you got the information from. According to blah, 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 this is, this is what they believe. According to my primary research that I conducted, um, so you use, you make it very clear and, 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 and trans, oh, make sure there's clear evidence that you've conducted research and, and whatever's put, packed into your multimedia presentation, there's direct links to research. Now, the last part is criterion D. And again, this is worth six marks. So this is quite important. Now, this is your conclusion. So you've conducted all your research. Uh, now, in your presentation, you need to provide effective and well-supported further insights into the inquiry process. Now, this is important. This is preparing you for a university. So you've conducted all this research. When you get to the end of all your research, you don't say, there it is, it's all finished, I've answered all your questions. That's not how research works. When you get to the end of your research, you realize there's more research that's needed. There's more things to consider. There's more exploration. So this is the kind of tone for your conclusion. And it demonstrates that you are an effective researcher because you've done your research and now you've got more ideas and more things that you really need to, to, to further investigate. So this is the further insights. So here's the body of work, but here's some insights that I found and here's some areas that we should continue to study. Uh, emerging trends and future developments. So this is also, it's your conclusion, but you're also thinking forward. Now, just to give a, uh, an example right now, AI is very uh, hot topic in education, particularly with the access and launch of chat GPT. Now, when you think about chat GPT and machine learning and artificial intelligence, there's, there is, there's what it is today, but there's gonna be some emerging trends and future developments. So, be sure to address this issue in your conclusion about emerging trends and future developments. Okay, so that's the assessment criteria. So when you're preparing your document, copy and paste all of that and become very familiar with the assessment criteria. Make sure you are responding to A, B, C, and D. And every single word in that assessment criteria if you wanna to get top marks. Okay, let's look at, oh, there's one more. There's the criterion E, which is the communication. And that's basically how well your documents are prepared in your multimedia, that it communicates effectively. So this is, this is probably the last, last piece of the puzzle where you tidy things up and make them look well packaged and presented the, present the information clearly and succinctly. Okay, so the three main sections we've discovered now in your document, you're gonna have your inquiry process document, you're gonna have your multimedia presentation, and then you're gonna have your ref references and bibli bibliography. So make sure in your uh, document that you're setting up, you've got those three main sections. Now, in your inquiry process document, claims and perspectives, a very, very important um, piece of the puzzle here, but also having good resources and good sources of information. So the inquiry process is gonna be jam packed full of that. Now I'm not gonna go through every word here. I'm just gonna share this with you so you can prepare your own research document. Uh, inquiry focused, now I've just loaded up information here to try and help you. So the first part should be about 300 words and that is your focus. What is your focus? Uh, and you've got to, and, and I've kind of broken it up in a lot, lot of words now, I don't wanna, go on for too long with this video, um, but I don't want to dumb it down either. Um, so I'll try and get, I'll try and strike the right balance there. So with this 300 word section, the inquiry focus, which is criterion A, uh, you need to address your inquiry question. So you need a well-crafted inquiry question. Uh, you need a well, uh, you need a relevant real world example identified as well. And you also need to connect it to concept a content and context. So make, that's the first section. 
So whatever you're studying, uh, that's the first piece of the puzzle. Okay, let's move on to the next piece, which is criterion B. Criterion B is your the claims and perspectives. So here is this your this is where you, you how many words you've got? 1,200 words now. Now just be aware, you you need three three sources. You've got 1,200 words, so that means 300 words, approximately 300 words, no, actually more than that. Um, sorry, let me just go back down. So there's, if you, I'm just suggesting some word uh, counts here. So if you've got three sources of information and you allocate 300 words for each of those, uh, that's 900, and then you've got another 200 words that you could put at the start of this section, which basically explains the research process and how your research was conducted. Okay, you also need to justify uh, the usefulness of your inquiry. So why are you actually researching this? Is it of use uh, in the world in some, some way as well? That needs to be addressed. Okay, moving on, claims and perspectives, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now I'm talking about the multimedia presentation. Your multimedia presentation, there's a lot of different types of multimedia. Um, so one of the key parts here is actually trying to work out what am I going to create? I'm creating a multimedia presentation. What is something suitable for this presentation? Um, so there needs to be a part of a, a, a maybe a little brainstorm session and an exploration about how to, what tools are you going to use uh, to create your multimedia? Okay, so <clears throat> five minutes, I've allocated about 500 words. So the first five minutes is uh, focus on Criterion C, your analysis and your evaluation. Now, the next part would be your conclusion. And so again, I've got about, it's because it's worth six marks, your conclusion. So they're both worth six marks, C and D. So probably you need to share the amount of time for both of those sections. Um, so 500 words for your conclusion, because it's worth six marks. It's not just a paragraph at the end your conclusion is actually a really important piece here. So um, I've considered how to break up that five minutes, two and a half minutes for your analysis and evaluation, and two and a, two, oh, sorry, two to three minutes for that, and two to three minutes for emerging trends and future developments. So again, you don't, this is just you preparing and saying you get your head around what you actually have to present. You don't have to stick to these, these word counts or these time limits, this is just a guide and it's the early stages of the, the research process. So you're just getting your head around what you actually have to create. So that's section D and then criterion E, of course, is your presentation, how you present your document and your multimedia. Okay, now you understand. We've just completed step one. So now you move on to step two. Step two is actually deciding on what you're going to research. Now, an easy way to start this is maybe if you go back to looking at the, the, the if you look at context lists, if you look at the content list, and you look at the, what was the first one, the concepts, this is actually a really good starting point. So you might start to think, you know what, I'm kind of interested in data, well, I'm also interested in, you know, types of data. No, I'm not. Actually, I'm interested in computer, types of computer. I'm interested in that. So this is a nice place just to start getting the creative juices flowing and working out, what am I going to study? What am I going to do? So have a good look through this um, and start identifying some areas that you're interested in. Now, that's important when you're doing some research. You want to research something that you're actually interested in whatever field it is, and you, you want to pick a, pick a field where you're going to be able to increase your knowledge. Because if you're interested in something, that's what you actually want to do. You want to increase your knowledge and understanding of that area. So take a bit of time and don't rush this part because you're going to put a lot of time and effort into this to pick the topic that you actually are very interested in. Now this area here, the, co um, the context, this is actually quite, uh, there's a lot of different topics here. So what are you interested in? Are you actually interested in health, the health area? Or perhaps you're interested in politics? So latch on to some of these things and to help you kind of start getting a bit of an idea of what you're going to research. So brainstorm is probably the easy, a, 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 a good starting process. 
But then the second start, the, the second part is probably, and I think I might have an example here somewhere. Here we go, mind map. So if you create yourself a mind map, and when you're creating the mind map, be sure to connect with real life examples, context, concepts, and content as well. So you can start you know, mapping out some different ideas. So that's the part two. Now, part, another part of part two, so try to work out what area you're going to research, but also, what are you going to, how are you going to present your multimedia document? Now, I use the help of artificial intelligence, ChatGPT, to, and I ask ChatGPT to list me, list the various forms of multimedia. So there's a lot of different forms. When the, when the phrase multimedia is used, often people think, I've got to make a video, but you don't have to. There's a lot of other multimedia forms that you could actually latch onto. So decide what you want to do. Now, when you're deciding your multimedia, there's two things to consider. First of all, something maybe an area that you've already got some skills in. So perhaps you have created some animation in the past. So you think, you know what, I've got some animation skills. I'm going to extend those and explore those. Um, so think of your skill set to begin with. But the other way you can look at, look at this is, is just think about this as a chance to build a new skill. So you know what, I've never created an ebook. you might be thinking. It's like, you know what, this is a great chance for me to start an ebook. I'm going to create an electronic version of a printed book that includes multimeter elements. Um, now there's a time limit to this, <clears throat> so just be cons considerate of, of the time. Um, so if something's a bit text heavy, uh, I think when it comes to a time limit, it lends itself more to spoken. The, tech, the information being spoken and shared. Anyway, you choose a multimedia form that you suits you best. Okay, step three. Once you've kind of got a bit of an idea, now step one, again, you've just understood the task. What is the IA all about? Step two, you start brainstorming research topics and what kind of multimedia format are you going to uh, use for the multimedia presentation? Step three, now it's time to refine the research and your research focus. So you need to start thinking um, how to start uh, thrashing out a few uh, research questions and share it with your friends, share it with your teacher and workshop this. Um, but just remember, you need to have a context, a concept and a content and there's gotta be certain claims and perspectives and you need to be thinking about the future as well, future emerging trends. So as you're, as you're playing around with some research topics and research questions, just don't forget the assessment criteria. It's a tragedy when students get off track and they do this amazing project, but it doesn't match the assessment criteria. So make sure it matches it and do that here at the early start. Before you start putting hours into the project, Make sure it matches the assessment criteria so you're not wasting your time and energy. Now, when it comes to research questions, two little things that I would thoroughly recommend. First of all, use the command terms. So the IB has given you a bunch of command terms, use them. Use the AO3 command terms because they're, they are the, they're the ones for deeper exploration and they're the evaluation and synthesis command terms. So use those uh, when you're creating your research question. And now, once you've got your research question, I found a nice little tool here. It's called the platforms, uh, ChatGPT uh, platforms. Now, one of them is an essay outline. Now, once you've got yourself a research kind of topic and a vague idea of a question, punch it into the essay outline ChatGPT, and it's gonna give you a structure of an essay. Now, if it gives you something a bit weird and strange and is like, that doesn't make sense, the reason is your research question is no good. So change your research question and then see what it spits out once again. And if it's still a bit off track, change your research question. So use the artificial intelligence to try and help you not only craft your research question, but also do an essay outline. Now, you're just getting an outline here. It's, and now you, it, you're probably not going to be 100% but it'll, it, it'll push you in the right direction. So you then, once you've got your research question and a kind of an essay outline, and you just workshop and refine them, uh, you're, gonna be in the, you're gonna be heading in the right direction. 
Okay, step four, time to do the research. Gather lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of research. And then once you've gathered all the research and you've done some of summaries and you start getting an idea, you then need to pick your three sources. Now just be aware here, you're focusing on three sources, but there's gonna be so much more research conducted. You need to keep a track of all those sources of information and put them in your bibliography. So when the assessor is looking at your document, they see clearly your three sources, but they also know that you've done a lot, lot more research, which is what happens in reality. So step four is do your research. Once you've done all your research and you've identified your three sources, time to work on criterion A and B, get that one done, and move on to criterion C and D, and that's the last step. So hopefully this video has helped you get started, or if you've already started and you're getting a bit lost, it's helped push you back on the right path. I hope this was helpful and good luck with your Digital Society IA.